While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Do you deserve happiness? Do you deserve happiness? How can we as people achieve happiness? Starting with you. This is something you attain to, right? This is something you want. Since you want your child to have happiness, right? You don't want your children to be miserable. You don't want to live in a world where you're miserable all the time, do you? So, how, I'm asking them a question. How do we get happiness, right? How do we get it? Through things you want to do. How do you get happiness, sis? God giving happiness. How do you get happiness? I say by finding joy in oneself and following the true word of the Lord and following your light. You can teach that to somebody else, right? Are you able to teach that to somebody else? You know, I like to teach that to my sister, and she she's a uh, a first lady, so she likes me and her like to talk. Sometimes she lifts me up and sometimes I lift her up. Is happiness sustainable? Can you sustain happiness over a long period of time? You should be able to. You should be able to sustain happiness over a long period of time. Right? Give me Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things, whatsoever, right? Things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you some things that you can learn from. It was written before. This is the New Testament. Once we finish this, we're going to go in the Old Testament, and we're going to show some things to expound upon how to achieve and sustain long happiness, right? Because that's what we want. Read. That we through patience. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. The scriptures is a key. Another key is to be patient. You all are exhibiting patience. So you right now, you're on the right path so far. So just stay with me, stay patient. And we're gonna go through these scriptures and the scriptures are going to bring you comfort. Read. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Might have what? Might have hope. So these scriptures are gonna give us hope. Give me Isaiah 26. It's gonna give us hope. We're living in a land where when we look around, all we see is death and destruction. All we see is desperate people doing things to, to achieve a quick amount of happiness, right? You see uh, people debasing themselves to make a quick buck. What does that bring them? A temporary moment of happiness because maybe they came up on a lick and they able to pay rent this month. Then what's up with next month? There's a reason why our people are in these uh, certain situations, right? The Lord put us in these positions and I'm going to go over it in a moment. But read this. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You hear that? What did that just say? There you go. You own it. You own it. What did that say, sis? I can read it again. Yeah, I got you. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Thou will keep him in Thou, who is the thou? Thou is referring to the Most High God. The Most High God will keep him or her. The Bible is written in a masculine form, but it's referring to our sisters as well. So the Most High God will keep him or her at what? In perfect peace. Perfect peace, not just any regular peace. This is perfect peace. Sustaining peace, right? Read. Whose mind is stayed on thee. So there's something you have to do in order to get this perfect peace. Your mind has to be what? Set upon the Lord. Just like the scripture says. Again. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Now, what are some ways our minds are supposed to be stayed on the Most High God? Well, go to Titus. Let's get some of the descriptions of what a woman and a man is. What is a woman? What are some re responsibilities of a woman? And for you, what is a man? What, what does the Lord expect of a man? Work? Provide for his family? Keep stuff cool and level. First, give me 1 Kings 2 and 2. 
Okay, I like I, I, I like what you said. Provide for his family. All right, give me First Kings two and two because we're gonna see what the Lord says. Read First Kings chapter two verse two. We're gonna see what it means to be a man. Read. I go the way of all the earth. This is King David talking to his son Solomon. Right. He's telling him, hey, there's something I expect for you to do after I'm gone. How you doing, sister? We showing our people how to get peace and how to sustain peace over a long period of time. That's something that you, as a child of God, must know and do in order to achieve this peace. Okay? Read. Be thou strong, therefore, and shew thyself a man. You hear that? King David told Solomon, be strong and show yourself a man. Let's see how you show yourself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments. You hear that? In order to be a man, you have to be strong on behalf of the Lord. A lot of our people get the misconception that following the Bible makes you weak. You know why? Because the perception that was put out by the people who believe in this image, come look at this image. The perception that was made up in the church by the people who believe in this image, they teach an effeminized man. They teach that this is your Lord and Savior. They teach that. Where do we find this image mostly at? In churches. Where, where have you found this image at, sister? How about you? In America? Okay, how about you? Where did you, in church? Can we find an image in the Bible? What you're gonna realize is church and Bible is two different things. All right, sister. We found out that church and Bible is two different things. Where in the Bible do we find this image? You know that? You know that for sure? Unless it's a picture Bible? How about this image? You haven't seen that? Read the precept that's underneath it. It's gonna give you a clue to where you find it at. So a lot of our people think, think what? think that being a biblical man is something that's soft. It's not. It's one of the toughest things you can ever do because we designed and we made a certain way. We made to accept and like certain things that we like. But being a man or a woman of God, we have to overcome those things. We can't give in to the fleshly desires that he says it's okay to do. All you have to believe under his name is in Christ Jesus. That's all you have to do and then it's all safe for you. It's not. That's something that you gotta do. Your mind, before you go and transgress or go sin, has to be stayed on the Most High God. And that's going to bring you peace. You wanna know how? Say for instance, you have an issue with lusting after women, right? You go, you lust after the women, you sleep with her, you lay with her, bam, you go to the doctor, you have an STD. If your mind was stayed on the Lord, well, the scriptures tell you, lust not after her in your heart, your mind was stayed on him, the peace that you're going to get is, you're gonna avoid the STD. It's that simple. It's not something where, okay, I'm going through these different trials and tribulations, and I jump into these trials and tribulations, and I don't fight, and all I have to do is say Jesus, that brings hell and misery. That's why our people are in the conditions that they're in. Right. Using substances, using alcohol, abusing themselves with mankind. Bring it up. Because we have been tricked, we have been lied to. Read this again. The book of 1 Kings chapter two and verse three. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Keep the charge of the Lord thy God means keep the commandments of God, read. To walk in his way. To walk as God, give me, um, Matthew 5 and 48 after this. Keep the charge of the Lord. God said we could be perfect. You believe that? You can, you, do you believe you living on this earth for as long as you've lived can be perfect? You know why you believe that? Because we've been lied to. We've been told no man is perfect. We got Job in the Bible that was perfect. We got our big brother Christ was perfect. David, as flawed as he was, he was perfect. So you gotta ask yourself, what does perfect mean? Let's read. The book of Matthew, chapter five, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. 
That's a charge. That's the commandment that we're given. We're held to a higher standard. We're told as Israelites, you an Israelite, you ain't heard that yet, but they've heard it. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are the true Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. You're given a charge. Be the best you can be. You ever told your child, your child say, Mom, I'm having problems in school. I don't know how to do this, that, and the third. And you say, it's okay. I believe that you good, but if you fail, I'm not having a problem with it. You don't want them to fail. You don't encourage them to fail, do you? You encourage them to do what? Strive. To be what? To be better. To do what? To be the best. That's what you do. You tell your child, you got this. You can do this. Because it's possible. You just have to, being a parent, know what it takes to make that child succeed. You have to know that I can't give up on my child. I have to give my child the best fighting chance. That's what God did. That's what God did for his children. He said, I'm going to set them up the best possible way, and I'm going to demand that they be perfect, because they can be perfect. Your child, if they were failing, they can come out of failure. You just have to know how to apply yourself so that they can succeed. Read. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. You hear that? Our God is perfect. That's not something impossible to do. All you have to do is keep the commandments and you will be perfect. Let's go back to what we were reading in Kings. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. So let's go uh, to, I think it's Timothy, modest, modest. So we're going to show you how to get that peace. You want the peace, right? So, so far from read, how do we get peace? What, what, what did you hear? It's Mimi, right? Or is it something else? You just told me a name, any name? What is it? All right, so how do we get peace? Let's read Isaiah 26 real quick. How do we get peace? That's good, I like that. How do we get peace? Who should be first and foremost on your mind? Should it be TV, social media? Should it be whatever wicked thing you got going on? Let's read. The book of Isaiah chapter 26 and verse three. Thou will keep in perfect peace. Thou will keep in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. You have to first learn how to trust the Lord. You know how you can learn to trust the Lord? Read in his Bible and see that everything that happened in the world was already foretold to happen to his world. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.